Neptune 3 Plus, my biggest 3D printer ever here on the channel. This thing is gonna be a monster. We're gonna check it out. It's a direct drive, not Bowden. So I'm looking forward to this. Let's see what we got. If the boxes get much bigger, I'm really gonna have to get a bigger studio. This was sent by Elegoo for me to check out. Uh, I do have some of their equipment here. You've seen it on the channel before. We've got the wash and cure station out in the garage and uh, this is the Neptune 3 Plus. Wow, <laughs> it's big. Packaging looks really, really good. Uh, as usual on the channel, I like to check it out. It's not a trivial thing, it matters. This one looks like it has come Everything is still in place. Nothing's been jumping around. Looks promising. Let's get it out. What a monster. <laughs> it's basically fully assembled. There's not much to it. The gantry is fully assembled. There's two support bars. Geez, it needs them. And uh, basic instructions. Instructions look amazing. I like these. Uh, you can tell at a glance that they'll be easy to follow. This is the only little gotcha I've found so far. Wire retainer here, it shows it being off the back side in the manual. Uh, you have to put it in about this orientation here, otherwise it binds up underneath this supporting rod, this stay rod uh, for the top of the gantry mounts or the entire cross brace. It'll allow it to go to the top of its stroke without jamming up in there. Okay, what I've done is I went through and followed the instructions exactly for leveling. It did a 46 point level, and now we're going to adjust our offset. And that is just about perfect. Maybe just one less, yeah, one less. That's just right, and we're done. Point, negative point 1.47, we're done. I've loaded up the little bit of filament that arrived with it. Uh, it's a tiny amount, so I haven't even looked at what's on the SD card yet. Ran it through the runout, the filament runout sensor and shove it through. Oh yeah, just roll the knob and through it goes. And they definitely did a red print before. This, much like the Ender 3 was, is nearly silent. Uh, this, actually the Ender 3 is making more noise than this. I'll uh, do a little noise test later. Man, it's quiet. I'm liking this. Looking good. Can't believe how quiet this thing is. Wow. That. It's pretty cool. Looks like we might have enough filament too, which would be good. Okay. We have a print. That is really, really nice. There's a few funky layer lines near the bottom. Geez, other than that, that's, that's really good. Huh. Wow. That is really, really good. Well, original G-Code always makes a printer look good. No question there. Looks, except for those bottom layers. There's a little funkiness there, but geez, the top's just beautiful. So, um, 
I made a profile on Prusa Slicer, uh, my best guess at everything, and uh, we'll see how it does with my own printing. We'll see how this comes out, but let's check out one of the coolest features. We press the LED button and we have LED lighting. Finally, a printer with its own lights and controlled by a convenient touchpad. That's awesome. I really like that. It's a small thing, like the price of LEDs, but the benefits are quite huge. You can see on my Ender, I have a smart bulb shining down on it. And that's a pain having another fixture up there and clamped on that can fall down and get in the way and wreck a print or worse. So yeah, a few LEDs, nice touch. This is our result. Comes off perfectly easy. Beautiful bottom finish. And we did good. Beautiful finish. This'll do, this is the finished part. Not bad for a first try. What I'll do is we'll try a Benchy uh, just with the new profile and see how we did. Uh, I think everyone should try making their own profiles from time to time, honestly, because then you have a pretty good idea of where you started and you can modify it a much, much easier downrange to suit different problems and different styles of prints. Well, I have to say that is a pretty darn nice Benchy. Uh, I'm gonna get a macro lens to do this justice. Wow. Okay, check that out. Not bad. Just a tiny little dollop at the overhang. For a complete first guess, I would say we hit it pretty good. I don't believe I'm going to change a thing in that profile. I think I say we just run with that. <laughs> okay, this printer can print. And for a reminder of scale, that's the size of the Benchy compared to the printer. That quality came off of that massive printer. I, I am really impressed. That's pretty cool. I had to shut this off early because apparently I turned off the supports by accident. I have to say, I'm pretty pleased with those. Uh, that profile I made is a winner. I don't think we can do a lot better. And here's the pegboard um, holders that I made for my lathe bits. And you can see there's no stringing between one tiny string. And that's it. So I think we nailed it. Oh yeah, we nailed it. That off of an extremely large format printer. And oh yeah, by the way, this filament is ancient. This filament is at least two years old and has been dried twice because it didn't print at all <laughs> good. So I ran it through the Sane Smart dryer twice. And uh, geez, I'm good with that. What do you guys think? Small stuff's really gonna show the problems. Big ones are just gonna end up wasting a lot of filament to get to the same conclusions, but yeah, I'm good with that. That's pretty cool. So we'll try some TPU and see how it does. And done. How'd we do? Absolutely lovely. That is a beautiful finish. And our support material. This is always a little bit tight on any of my printers, but yeah, not too bad. Actually really good. Yeah, no issues there. I am able to get these pretty much the same results with my Bowden printer, uh, same profile, but uh, yeah, pretty good. You can check out my video on the Ender 3 where uh, I get almost the same results. Actually, this is a little bit better. That's beautiful. 
happy with that. With the printer just finished the TPU, I'm hearing the power supply fan is the loudest I've heard yet, louder than when the thing was running. So that's a good time to take a noise reading. Get in the neighborhood of 55 decibels, and if we go up nice and close, we get 63. But realistically, what you're hearing is going to be from at least this distance. I'll take another measurement with it running. We'll see how that turns out. This one has no bad reflection on the printer at all. I just wanted to see what would happen and I figured it would fail by about here, but I let it keep going. It's a TPU in spiral vase mode. And that is pretty neat, but it actually did remarkably well. There's no substance to it, right? So it's always just gonna keep pulling and leaving gaps and stuff everywhere. It shouldn't have worked at all, but uh, it did. That's pretty cool. Uh, just, just for fun. No reflection on the printer other than I'm, it did pretty good at that far. <laughs> wow, that is impressive. Check this out. This printer did an amazing job. Now remember, the print quality isn't a factor of the printer. The print maximum quality is, but I have never once achieved maximum quality on any printer I own. I'm sure I am not that good. So that's my first spiral vase print on this printer. I think that brings the review to a close. Uh, this thing is going to get tons of use in my shop. I, it will go alongside the Ender 3v2, which is printing right now. And between the two, uh, the Ender 3 being a smaller form factor and the Neptune being my large form factor, I can just make all the stuff I need for the shop, for the projects, for our videos. We should be in good shape. Just leave a thumbs up if you can. Really appreciate it.